everybody welcome back to my channel so as promised in today's video i'm doing mercury oh well in this video i'm doing mercury in cancer through the houses because as i said everybody could have a mercury in cancer but it will be the displayed the blade i'm going to say the blade it'll be displayed differently depending on which house it's in right so in my previous video I just touched on like what Mercury and Cancer individuals will innately share and what all of them will innately share, you know, even despite the houses that it will be in. But we talked about how Mercury and Cancers think and analyze in emotions and in moods. And that's why they are so good with adjusting their own tones and their own moods so that you assess the information the way that they want you to because it's all about the mood it's all about the tone you're saying it in so if you're like an aggressive talker and you're just now meeting this cancer mercury person and you're aggressive they're not picking up on oh you're just like someone who speaks daddy like that they're feeling like oh shit whoa that was really rude oh damn that didn't make me feel good oh that feeling how you said that made me feel this you know what i'm saying that type of thing it's not like the mercury and air sign where they don't really care about like the feeling or the expression they're just caring about the information the actual words that are coming out of your mouth you know what i'm saying or earth signs that are caring about if what you're saying makes sense you know mm -hmm. um so mercury cancers as i said they really think and feel in mood so you have to watch your tone i'm pretty sure mercury and cancer came up with that oh mercury and water sign came up with that watch your tone when you're talking to me because your tone matters doesn't matter what you say, it's how you said it. Anyway, having Mercury in Cancer, Cancer in your first house, you are somebody that's constantly, and this is someone that's like a lot more selfish. And I feel like every time we mention first house, we have to also mention that you have tendencies of being a very selfish person or a self-consumed person, self-absorbed person. So having Cancer in here can make you self-absorbed about thinking about your own emotional well-being, you know, and discarding other people's way of... Um, emotionally stabilizing themselves if it opposes or if it's different to or if it's unfamiliar to how you innately handle your own emotional issues and how you register and process how you should handle your own emotions you know once again i think with cancer there's always this theme of expectation or expecting or even imposing how you think people should do things and i'm not hating on you this is strict observations right but there can be this element of like expecting people to act and react in ways that you want them to so having mercury in the first house here not only do you are you someone that processes information based on how does this make me feel does this make me feel good am i familiar with this do i care about this do i want to nurture this you know what i'm saying i mean yeah my friend is talking about something that she loves but does it matter to me do i care about it do i care about the fact that her favorite food is tacos because my favorite food is pizza. So do I care about her shit? Hmm. That's Cancer Mercury people. Right? But anyway, they have this thing of like, um, I, I would even say sometimes discarding somebody else's emotions, you know, even though they are really good at connecting to people's emotions. But I think it would be a lot more difficult for them to consider, for them to consider somebody else's point of view if they haven't connected to that point of view or if they aren't familiar with that point of view or if that point of view could potentially harm the or pre-existing feeling that they have about a specific point you know cancer cancer let me tell you something about cancer or mercury's in the first house if you are somebody that doesn't agree with some like things that they have connected to emotionally or something or like their upbringing or for example if a cancer mercury can if a cancer mercury's mother always taught them to you know appreciate their name and their surname and really care about it and really you know what i'm saying like stick like yeah your surname is important you know and let's say a cancer mercury person encounters someone who's like bro i don't give a fuck about my surname that cancer mercury is gonna feel threatened you know and be like no you should you should care about that this is your name you know what i'm saying then they start imposing they start imposing how they feel and how they connect to shit 
so that's how they process things so it's all like, it's all going to reflect back to themselves so these can be the, like the really aggressive cancers who may not have a lot of friends especially they, these are the type of people that would prefer like um having friends from their childhood you know or even just having cousins as friends so even having their mom as a friend you know because cancer is always going to connect deeply to their mama mm -hmm. like kim remember from the parkers kim and nikki that's that's it the cancer mercury would love to be homies with their mom because they know their mom is gonna ride for them to the day they die and their mom is the only person that really 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 cares about them the way that they want to be cared about you know because the cancer cancer people may feel like people don't really give a fuck about them the way they know they give a fuck about things you know but they know their mom their mom is gonna give a fuck about them and if they don't have a mom that gives a fuck about them like that then these are the type of people that will seek it out from other people you know or they will become that and then essentially still want that um emotional nurture that their mom didn't give them you know that type of thing but yeah mercury and cancer in the first house very self-absorbed or emotionally absorbed in how they handle their emotions you know um yeah, I think this could also be someone that's somewhat illogical. Or, like, it, okay, yeah, there's always, been, there's always gonna be a theme of illogicalness with water signs, you know. But, yeah, I think they're just, they're these are the type of people that just really care about how they deal with their own emotions. So, if anybody um, says or does anything that opposes that or threatens that, then these are the very snappy, they'll snap at you. No! Don't! You should, you should, I don't think you... Mm that type of thing you know you got you guys know yourselves mm -hmm. um so these girls will, these girls will come with somewhat be like the a little bit unstable um cancer mercury people. so we're gonna move on to um mercury in tor i mean taurus mercury in cancer in the second house which is the house of taurus whatever so mercury in cancer in the second house this is a sextile, right, for the Cancer energy, because Cancer is a sextile to the second house, right? Because it's house of Taurus, Taurus, Cancer, sextile signs, you know? So I would say this is... So Cancer... Okay, so let's just say this. Cancer being in the second house, is it, it'll play out as a Taurus moon. Or even having Taurus in the fourth house, it'll play out as having a Taurus moon, which is basically an exaltation, right? It plays out, it plays out as an exaltation where you have this... Um, you connect very deeply to like your roots and you connect and you value and you see your roots as something that you have and something that you have to hold on to for the rest of your life regardless of if it's beneficial to your well-being or not you know if you have planted traditions in that or you if you are well um acquainted I mean, not say acquainted if you're like well planted into your traditions right you don't want as a Taurus merc well cancer mercury in the second house you don't want to let go of those traditions you know so it's, it's similar to the first house only first house is really um pertaining to yourself right like your own personality and all of that personal issues but second house is more so about things that you have and that things that you value you know your value systems and things that you feel like you can offer to the world that's what you will think about with a cancer mercury in the second house you know but with this, it's more so like, how do I continue to nurture the things that I value? And how do I continue to grow? And how do I continue to maintain? And um, I did say nurture. But how do I continue to care for, you know, the things that I have and things that I value? And what is that? You naturally thinking and communicating about things that you are valuing, right? Which is probably some traditions that you learned when you were young from your mom or whoever raised you. Your grandmother, or your uncle, auntie, whatever, sister right things that like tr like um teachings valuable teachings that they taught you or valuable things that your grandmother like for example you know like every family has their grandmother grandmother has been through so much so they're always giving you wisdom and always keep telling you yo then i'm don't do that, you know, when I was your age, we used to do it like that, but I learned that, you know, it's better to do things this way, or it's better to live life like this, or it's better to think this way, so that you can, Cancer Mercury's will hold on to that, and they usually value whatever information that they got from, whoever they got it from, that they cared about very deeply, and they start moving and acting and, uh, you know, nurturing those very teachings, those value systems because those value systems will always stem from where they come from you see that's the fourth house energy it's always fourth house is about where you come from and that's in the past and as i said water signs are all about the past you know so with this they're valuing 
and how they think is always stems from their value systems or systems that they learn from people that they value which is family members or even you know whatever like maybe they have this teacher that they loved so much so you know you don't think it like that you know but basically how they think and these type of people these people are really good at getting to the money i i feel like we don't acknowledge i'm acknowledging you cancer mercury you guys know how to get to the money like unbelievably it's crazy like i would love to marry some maybe i don't want to get married but like if i did it would have to be someone with some kind of cancer placements because you guys know how to get to the money and not just for that reason you know what i'm saying but just like one of the reasons why i would right because you guys know how to get to the money and you know how to like stabilize that money and you know how to like um grow it it's so it's so like when a cancer decides that they don't want to be broke anymore which is a lot of the times all cancers they know how to not be broke for the rest of their lives <laughs> It's crazy, especially with this in the second house. I wouldn't be surprised if you are someone that was good at numbers just because you knew that, okay, if I learn this now, then I can continue to nurture how to work with numbers because I know that in situations in the future, which is unfamiliar, which is scary for Cancer Mercury to think about, you know, which is why they always want to hold on to what they already know. And if they already know how to do math, then they want to nurture that and continue to grow with that. And let that be the way that they stabilize themselves and let that be part of their value systems. You know, second house vibes, you know what I'm saying? That type of thing. So these are the type of people that they know how to, like, hold on to things that they value. Like, they use, you, you know, some people, like, um, air signs especially, and Sagittarius and Aries, they may like let go of specific teachings or they may just all of a sudden just change or Aquarius or all of a sudden just change how they think and completely change their lives and completely change their philosophies you know depending on whatever it is that they went through cancer mercury in the second house they don't do that you know if chances are like if they grew up a christian and they grew up with christian values they're going to be a christian for the rest of their life because it's familiar and it also reminds them of home and y'all know how y'all is with y'all home. Mm -hmm. You just want to connect to it and stay in it because it's your comfort zone. And that's the thing with cancers and their comfort zone. If it opposes their comfort zone or if it disrupts their comfort zone, then they're going to like fight back. You know what I'm saying? So that's the thing with cancer mercury it's in the second house. And you guys are usually like when people come to you for advice, as I said in my cancer mercury, you guys are always willing to give people advice. But for this particular placement, you're always giving advice that your grandmother taught you. You know what I'm saying? So you just pass it down to people who you care about. Even your own children, if you decide to have children. That Moving guy. on to Mercury and Cancer in the third house. So Mercury loves to be in the third house, as I've said so many times in my life. <laughs> you heard, you've heard me say that shit, right? So Mercury loves to be in the third house because this is the house of Gemini, right? But instead of Gemini, we have Cancer here for all my... What? All my... Um... Can... Taurus Risings, yeah, Taurus Risings have this person. Cancer in the fourth. Yeah, so how you, you're like, you, you, I think with this placement, I think you also really go with like calculating numbers and stuff, but I think maybe it was a lot, it's a lot easier, a lot more smooth for you to have conversations with people. Like you're probably the Cancer Mercury people that would be, down or it's like a lot easier for you to be in people's faces on some hey how are you maybe not all the way because you still have to check them out and see are you a mean person are you not a mean person you know you could because of that that third house familiarity right third house is all about things that you're familiar with and um people places and things that you're familiar with like your surroundings but not so much your immediate home surroundings most of the surroundings of like the area that you live in the whole area the neighborhood of the place that you live in you know so having friends schools you know like we all live closer to our school so that's the full part that will fall part of our third house you know what i'm saying um yeah so your friends would also fall in the school you know the petrol station the people that work there people that you're familiar with you know what I mean? familiar faces that's third house type of shit so i think for you i think with this placement even just having cancer in the third house i think you're someone that would probably not want to move away from where you grew up at you know these are the type of people that like would buy a house not too far away from their their mom's home or their parents home you know just because of the familiarity of it because you've gone so comfortable with those energies so moving away as much as you will be a lot better at communicating with this placement because mercury at least is in the house that it likes to be at 
but it may, you know, it's still a little bit slow. It let me not slow, but it's like it has to slow down because it has to analyze what it's connecting to or what it wants to connect to emotionally. You know what I'm saying with its surroundings. So that's the thing with um, Mercury and Cancer and the third house people. As I said, is that they may not necessarily want to change their friends. You know, these are, these are the type of people. Even having Cancer in the third house, you are like the mom. You're the mom in the friend group. You're always the one making sure people are okay. You know, you're always the one making sure that people have their jackets. You're probably the per the person that people, like, you have you have your fanny pack or your bag. And your friends are always like, please hold my phone. Please hold my jacket while they go and do some whole shit. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? You're that friend. You're like the stable friend that you stand in the corner with your phone. You're protecting everything that belongs to your friends. You know what I'm saying? But you know how to, like... Have a good time, but still be ca careful and cautious because you're always aware of your surroundings with that third house. You know, you're always aware of the vibes going on around you. So you're always like the one protecting your friends or whatever. Like, guys, I think we should go right now because I, it, 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 it still will go back to you because you'll be like, no, nah, I don't feel like doing this anymore. You know, let's just go back home. Oh, well, guys, nah, let's not do this right now. Let's just go back home. Let's just, you know what I'm saying? You'll be like that type of, you're, you're that friend, you know? That friend people are like, um, they'll call you whenever like their life is fucked up. Like you, you're very friend orientated. You're very homey orientated, and you're probably the type of person that will want to have that will want to like go to the same university as your friends from high school. You know, if you lost your friends from high school, this was probably like a really devastating moment for you because it was like I mean it's, it's devastating for all of us, but for you particularly, it's just like damn because you really cared about them. Like you really, really, really care. You care so much, uh, and it's like, damn, like, why don't you understand how much I care for you? Like, why do you keep doubting it? You know, and some people, I guess, aren't overly aware of that amount of care that you, that actually rhymes. They're not aware of the amount of care that you have. But anyway, yeah, that's the thing, you guys, um, how you process information too, I guess you also, I guess, but you, how you process information is always going to stem from are you familiar with it? Like, do you know, do you have a friend that reminds you of this new person that you're talking to? Because if not, then this is when you'll be a lot more reserved because you still have to analyze everything that's around you, right? And have to compare if it reminds you of a familiar person that you already know of, that you've already formed a connection with. Like, for example... I've been with my brother and my parents for since I was born, right? So if I go into the world and I encounter someone who talks like my mom, who even thinks like my mom, then it'll be a lot more easy for me to connect with her because I know, like, it's she has similar vibes to my mother and my brother, you know? So that, that's me if I was a Cancer Mercury in the third house. That's how I would think. It's like, okay, wait, do I know someone like you? No? Oh, okay, well, let me just sit back and see. And let's feel, let's feel this through, like, hmm. Okay, wait, you actually remind me of a friend I had in grade five. Oh my god, dude, you even laugh like her. Oh my god, okay, now I can open up to you. That type of thing, you know. That's that's the thing. So you won't jump into a situation like an Aries Mercury will out of impulse, imp, impulse, impulsion. Enough for it. You won't jump into like getting to know someone impulsively. You just still have to analyze and be familiar with that person until you can call them your friend or until you can be like okay yeah i can somewhat extend my nurture to you and then yeah we're gonna move on to mercury in cancer in the fourth house for all my aries rising so fourth house as i said rules cancer so this kind of just adds an amplified cancerian vibe to it these are definitely the people that are you cancer fourth house don't you're not an a, an extroverted person unless maybe you have a, a gemini sun sign or a Leo sun sign. Actually, no. Um, nah, you still, nah. Maybe, maybe, like, you're still, like, an introverted person. You don't really, you may not really like people, even though you can't, especially if, like, Gemini sign, Leo sign, like, you are able to socialize, but you're, like, one of those socially secluded people where you prefer to go to parties or prefer to go places with people that you're familiar with. Like, Maybe going to things alone would make you feel very vulnerable and make you think about, damn, I have to, I don't know, open up or damn, I'd have to fake this feeling for them. I have to pretend like I like people. And for you, pretending can be difficult unless you have to, like, unless your job makes you pretend, you know what I'm saying? But even that, I feel like you probably quit, you know what I'm saying? Unless you have, like, a child and you have, you know what I'm saying? Every situation is different, but 
I feel like with this placement, you definitely are an introverted person. You don't really like going out. As I said, like, you would prefer to have some kind of familiarity around you for you to feel comfortable. Because doing things alone or maybe going places alone or maybe even the idea of, like, going to a party alone and not knowing anybody and feeling like you have to introduce yourself to people and be like, hi, mm, that's, like, ugh, cringe. Rather stay at home rather have a house party or rather just have like a house chill vibe with the homies because you know the homies are safe and you know the homies you know they you know their hearts you know their intentions you've been with them for like three years or something you know what i'm saying that type of thing but other than that not even just your homies i would even say like your sisters and your cousins like you are probably a different person at home than you are when you're in the world at school with work parties whatever you know you're just very it's very distinct to know that like you're very different you know at home you're a lot more free and a lot more comfortable because you know home is safe and it's all about safety with fourth house cancer placements are you safe are you comfortable you know are you feeling nurtured are you feeling the love because if you're not then you're going to be uncomfortable and then you can like close your shells up and then you know because i know cancers have this they can like show this stay away from me kind of but not like scorpio stay away from me which is like scary but it's more so like a bitchy like cancer's gonna be very bitchy in that sense like don't fucking talk to me bro you know just protecting that shit you know but yeah that's how how you think and feel is similar to the third house but it's more so um i think with this you're definitely someone that's looking to you're always thinking about your feelings, really. Especially if you have a Cancer moon with this or, like, a Scorpio Pisces moon. You're definitely always thinking about your feelings. Like, how you sound will always sound... Like, you can say anything, but it will always sound like you're in your feelings about something. Even when you're not, which is probably... Maybe... If you're not, it's probably, like, 10% of the time. But constantly, you're thinking about your feelings. And how you sound to other people, it sounds like, oh, okay, wait... Oh, she's feeling some type of way about this. Oh, okay, wait. Well, I don't... So you could be, like, with an air Mercury. You could be with a Gemini Mercury, Libra Mercury, especially an Aquarius Mercury that doesn't really feel much about shit. They're just, like, nonchalant-ass bitches. You know what I'm saying? Nonchalant bitches. They could be... Like, they could look at you like, oh, okay. Like, for example, Cancer Mercury could... I don't know, they could be talking... Because I feel like with you guys, you know, you, it's, like, such a... It's, like, a thing for you. You're just constantly talking about whatever or maybe you're not even talking about how something made you feel right but it'll sound like that because essentially it is that <laughs> you're always talking about how something makes you feel or there's always going to be like a vibration around oh, okay wait you're feeling some type of way about this so let's let's all like okay cancer's doing this okay let's just damn really you know what i'm saying so if you're on like a a, a, a mercury in aquarius they may always look at you like why are you always in your feelings about this? That was just... Because, you know, Aquarius Mercury can be very sarcastic and just very direct. And for you, Cancer Mercury, that could be a threat to your emotions. Or could be, like, very harsh, you know, not so emotionally sensitive. You know what I'm saying? Because how you think, you will always be sensitive. And you always analyzing how sensitive someone was to your feelings when they spoke to you because you're always going to be sensitive to the emotional states of others because you don't want them to react in a way that could threaten or ruin the mood that you have created for yourself and you also don't want anyone to tell you how to feel about a situation because that will make you even more moody and more snappy and more angry especially if you have this conjuncting mars as i've said you know what i'm saying that type of thing so with this placement i feel like you are um I say this yeah you're just like someone that you definitely think and feel in every mood you know and you know how to channel other people's that's that's why i feel like cancers are hustlers in that way just because they know how to channel other people's moods and make them feel comfortable because it's all about making people feel comfortable if you can make someone feel comfortable with doing something you can make them do anything really <laughs> really that's the truth and you know how to do that you know but you're just very shy um I know you're very shy. You're probably very careful about everything you say, you know. Um, yeah, and it's easy for you to, like, see through people. Like, just read through people. Like, okay, yeah, you may present that you're happy right now, but there's some I can feel, man. No, you, you're not, you're not there. Oh, I, I don't know, vice versa. It could be, you could show that you're sad, but they know, oh, wow, you're in a happy mood. And it's like, oh, wait, how did you know? And it's just like, oh, I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? What the fuck is you talking about, bro? I can feel it, bro. What? Definitely. But sometimes... Mm, no, actually, never mind. You can feel it. I was going to say something completely fucked up, but... 
not fucked up but like incorrect you know but i know you guys can feel it and then yeah moving on to cancer mercury in the fifth house right so cancer mercury in the fifth house people these are the people that so fifth house is a, is a fire sign right it's a fire house it's ruled by it rules leo so these are these are definitely the funny ass cancer like cancer mercury's are funny in general but in the fifth house you're hilarious dude because it's 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 gonna be similar to having a cancer sun sign you know where you're just constantly you're showing your moods you know it's difficult for you to hide how you feel in this situation so even with how you express something it'll be difficult for you to hide that that really made you feel this way these are the cancers that aren't afraid to tell you how they feel they're gonna express that it's gonna be apparent in how they said something yes but it's also going to be apparent in their face whether they want to or not but it's also like these are the cancers that like they can't hide how they feel because their face is going to be showing it they're going to show it with their face regardless of whether or not they want to so these also if they have it in the fifth house if they have like a, a cancer sun sign conjuncting their cancer mercury these would these may be the people that they still may be shy but they're like a lot more they're like oh they're like you know that run that one cute grandmother that everybody has that's like always laughing she's always smiling always ready to nurture but everybody knows how she feels and everybody essentially wants to help and everybody wants to nurture and help her and buy her groceries and all of that but and we all want to do that for her just because she's always showing and she's she's funny as hell first of all but she's always showing how she feels and she's always the emotional one that always brings the family together and you know makes everybody realize how happy we should be or whatever you know that type of thing i feel like cancer mercury it's giving that energy like they know they're just like whether they want to or not they're always like in a i had to switch the lights on but they're always like in this yeah they're just always gonna express how they feel whether they want to or not it's gonna be in their face and this can be frustrating sometimes because they can't hide and i feel like because of that it makes them more vulnerable and once again cancers don't like feeling vulnerable especially around people that they aren't necessarily comfortable with you know what i'm saying i guess that's everybody but like cancers especially like air signs may not really give a fuck because they don't do anything that stems from how they feel because they'll they're like what what's what is that <laughs> what is that you know what i'm saying or like damn it's like difficult to handle this right now but a cancer mercury excuse me they're just like a walking feeling they're just walking emotions you know what i'm saying and having it in the fifth house they're constantly expressing this whether they want to or whether they don't want to especially when they communicate with people like you it's like they have this grander like this huge expression of how they feel it's good like this could be the dramatic dramatic cancer mercury people very dramatic like super dramatic cancer mercury people about everything but it's funny though so you don't mind that it's dramatic even if they're telling you, okay, maybe no, no, I was gonna say, even if they're telling you about someone who died, because now nah, that's different, that's different. But these are definitely the funny Cancer Mercury. Like, all Cancer Mercury are funny, but this particular placement, you're fucking hilarious. Like, you were just saying hi, and I said this before in what, in, 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 in my Gemini Mercury in the fifth house, too. Just having Mercury in the fifth house really just makes you a very funny person, or you're susceptible to be funny, or take everything as a joke you know either or but this is gonna be something funny or very expressive or childlike you know sometimes people may not always take you seriously until you do something that's like that sparks the emotion of your seriousness you know those vibes um but yeah how you think and analyze will always also be in a mood but it's more so about uh, these are the kinds of the cancers that are also looking at the expression of what you're saying like how is your facial expression when you said that you know and when they analyze to their when they're talking to you they're also cognizant of the fact that hey they they are showing you their moods but they're also expressing it and they're making you feel their mood too that's how they analyze and process emotions and that's how they like um give out information too with mood and the expression too you know so you may not always necessarily what they have to say may not always make sense but you'll you'll get like it'll make you feel some type of way It'll make you feel some type of way. So you'll connect to that. You know what I'm saying? And then you'll feel it. Because they'll make you feel whatever it is that they're saying. Because whatever they're saying, they're going to feel themselves. 
I know that. And moving on to um, Mercury and Cancer in the sixth house, right? So sixth house is also home in Mercury. So Mercury likes being in the sixth house. The sixth house is all about how we like handle our daily life. Just every, just think about how you've done life every day, what you do on a daily basis. Like you brush your teeth, you eat food, um, you do your bed, clean your room, you drink water. Maybe some people smoke cigarettes. You smoke a joint. I don't know, you comb your hair, that's sixth house shit, you know, so everything that you do in your sixth house essentially contributes to the physical well-being, to your physical well-being, and physical well-being meaning your actual body and money or like how you stabilize yourself, you know, because if you're, <laughs> if you're smoking weed and then you don't go to work because you got high, then it's going to affect your stability, you know, and that goes to essentially affect your overall health. You know what I'm saying? So having Mercury in Cancer in the sixth house, this also creates like a, a an introversion because sixth house is an earth house, which is a feminine sign, feminine element, you know? Um, so having this placement, you're, you care, like you care about your health a lot and you care about like, you're someone that places a lot of, uh, let's say call, call it pressure you place pressure on yourself to always nurture the things that you do on a daily basis so these are the people cancer in six, oh yeah for aquarius rising so i also i also have this placement right so having cans in your sixth house generally on a daily basis you it's like you're you are someone that if you didn't wake up in silence or if you didn't if you woke up let's say there were people in your house and were making a noise and i don't know it just turned your mood off that whole day your mood is gonna be like that you know unless you have some kind of other routine like maybe say you do yoga you journal then you know that helps you stabilize your emotions but with this placement it's all about caring about how to stabilize your emotional well-being you know because you care about like the things that you do on a daily basis when it's difficult for you to like not put your heart and your soul into the things that you do because you do everything from the heart you know so when people ask you please walk me or please do this for me or can i it's like damn you have to think about damn like yo, am i in the emotional space to do this right now and it's like damn yeah that's the thing like with um, with you being moody too you could like be a very like your moods could also change throughout the day depending on how your body is reacting to the environment that you're in you know what I'm saying? Like your mood does adjust depending on the vibe of the place you're in. Or maybe let's say even your mood would change depending on how... If things didn't go like as planned, as scheduled, then this will this could take a toll on your emotional well-being, you know. But for the most part, I think you... Um, because you connect so well with your, with your daily life and just daily routine. Just you being alive every day is like an emotional experience. <laughs> And listen, I feel you. I have cancer in my sixth house too. I feel you, okay? I, I'm here. I feel you, you know? But I think with this, it's more so learning to and adjust. Let me say not learning. Like, realizing what helps you stabilize your mood on a daily basis and working with that, you know? So making sure that, like for me, for example, I do yoga every day in the morning and in the evening, and I journal every day. You know what I'm saying? And I have, like, my, um, I have, like, this thing with my crystals where I organize my crystal depending on the vibe of the world. Like, is it Virgo season? What's the moon in? You know what I'm saying? That type of thing. So, I've stabilized my mood in that way. And I'm saying this because I have cancer in my sixth house, too. So, I'm just, like, giving that information to you guys, you know. So, it's, like, every day, like, I have, I'd wake up, uh, have a cup of tea, maybe I journal. If I don't journal, then I have to do yoga. But that's the thing. I have to do yoga. Like, I do yoga because if I don't, then my whole day is fucked up. My whole day is ruined. I can't do anything. And if I do something, I'm just not in the mood. I get very angry or irritable. And I just don't want anyone to talk to me. You know what I'm saying? So you probably will experience that. But that's what you're constantly thinking about with this placement is, am I nurturing my routines? Am I nurturing my emotional well-being? And by that, it's like, am I following my routines and my schedules? Am I eating right? Also, another thing I mentioned, like every morning I have a fruit. Oh, I have to have fruits. Like, I can't eat anything else but fruits, you know? So, you, I don't know, you could have a different um, routine for yourself, you know what I'm saying? So, it's all about, like, how do I make sure that my body and how do I make sure that um, 
my overall physical everyday life is nurtured and um, cared for the way that I plan to do it. So with routines and with schedules and, you know, knowing that when this hap when you wake up, you have to do A, B, D, C, E, D, F, G. And then before I sleep, I'm doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then even throughout the day, like, what are my errands? Okay, what am I going to do first? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then you take care of that because whatever it is that you do, you're going to do with your heart. And what you that's what you're constantly thinking about, you know. But I feel like this also adds like a bit of um, practicality to the how you, how you think, you know. But a lot more like so as i said before like you know a virgo will always like question not always but like a virgo will always kind of criticize the way you think and a, a cancer won't criticize it but they'll just nurture it so i think with this because six house rules virgo right so i think with this you're definitely someone like you're still looking at the details of people's problems and when people approach you you're still looking at the details of what they're saying but you're not as like critical or nitpicky about it because you're still like okay let me let me vibe with you like let me jump on how you feel about the situation and then then i can um offer my analysis my detailed analysis of what i think about the situation you know that type of thing um but yeah i think you're just very detail oriented like i think it's very easy for you to detail like pinpoint your emotions and your emotional standpoint standpoint like in that moment you know what i'm saying it's like easy for you to be or as you develop it's like easy for you to be like oh okay no i felt like this because my body reacted this way and you're very that's the thing you're very connected to your body with this particular placement you're very connected to your emotions and your body because your body essentially will react also depending on how something made you feel you know it's like you feel with your body with this particular placement you know like your body is the thing that shows how you feel so whenever you feel uncomfortable like your i don't know your upper back may freeze up or your shoulders like your left shoulder may do some weird and use this mm, shit like that you know but yeah the important thing to realize with this is that like you feel with your body um, but how you naturally process information, how you give out information will always be detailed orientated, but emotionally orientated to, you know, so you know how to like, ex like pinpoint where, where your emotions come from, maybe, or you may be always trying to analyze that, but like also feel it through, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of like, okay, I felt that and my shoulder did that and it did that when that girl said, I hate trees and I don't know why that triggered me you know what I'm saying just just listen to your body with this listen to your body so yeah that's all I have to say with that and then moving on to uh, mercury in cancer in the in the seventh house right so gone to done with the first half onto the second half right mercury in cancer in the seventh house these people are constantly thinking about relationships so whenever we have seventh house things we're no longer in the first house where we're thinking about ourselves in the seventh house you're always thinking about other people your other people orientated thinking about other people's so this is the less selfish cancer people who does want to consider other people's emotions you know um and does like want to yeah essentially connect other people's emotions you know because as i said seventh house is all about the other and the relationships that you have with other people doesn't it can be romantic but it doesn't always have to just be romantic it can be like the relationship that you have the one-on-one -on -one relationship that you have with your mom just you and your mom not you and your whole squad just you and your mom that one-on-one -on -one thing you know that's what you're constantly thinking about but because we have so many one-on-one -on -one relationships i call them relationships as a whole because everybody like you have a separate relationship with your mom and then you have a separate relationship with your brother and a separate relationship with your father. But when you're all together, then you have a relationship with all of them. So you know how to relate to all of them. You know what I'm saying? So that's when the Aquarius, maybe Gemini relationship. But anyway, it's still a relationship. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but one-on-one. -on -one, you get what I'm saying? So that, that's what you're constantly thinking about. You're constantly thinking about the connections that you've made with the one-on-one -on -one people that are in your life. These are the cancers that, for all, these are Capricorn rising. So these are the type of people that they usually don't want to, they don't like breakups. They don't like getting to know someone new again. They don't want to do that. Oh my God. Because it's such a long process to get comfortable with someone. And then having to let go of that process, it's like, oh my. And not even just with like relations, like not dating things. Like just friendships also, your best friend. Seventh house is really just best friend energy. 
your bestest, you and your bestie, like that's, or it could be your boyfriend, you know what I'm saying, whatever, but it's just the one-on-one, like you guys have insights, like inside jokes, inside what, what with each other. But even even going to the topic with your friends, like, damn, having a new best friend is a hectic process. Because that one best friend, she knows everything about you. Like, you guys have grown up together. You went to school together. You got money together. You got your heart broken together. You ate lunch together. You went on dates, whatever. It's like, damn, bro, now you have to break up. Like, you wouldn't want that shit. And I guess maybe, as I said before, nobody wants that shit. But for you guys, cancers, because you connect... And for like other signs, it'll be easy to detach because they don't even have their whole hearts put into a situation. Like a Sagittarius, Aquarius, Gemini, sometimes Aries, they don't, they may not always put their all into a situation. But as a Cancer, seven times you put your all, you put your whole heart into people, you know, you put your eggs in that one basket. And that basket could be your best friend, your boyfriend, or whatever. You put all your care into them, you know. So you essentially, when you do that, you're thinking long term. You're thinking like, okay, I'm going to be your best friend forever. We're going to be boyfriend and girlfriend forever. Or girlfriend and girl- girlfriend and girlfriend forever. Boyfriend and boyfriend forever. You know, for a long time. Because that's what essentially water signs, maybe not Pisces. <laughs> but let me say it cancels. You're thinking about a long term thing, you know. So when you invest your emotional well-being and your emotions into a person, you're const- like you... Yeah, you just want a long term situation, right? So what you're constantly thinking and this is also someone with really who's really good with numbers, you know. Cancels are surprisingly really good, like accountants and you know, CEO type of shit. Manager, whatever, I don't know. Mm-hmm, you know. But anyway <laughs> But this placement what you're constantly thinking about are your relationships. You always probably think if you're single you always kinda of think about like damn when I want, when I start dating, I want my person to be like this and this and this, and we're gonna do these things and we're gonna do these things. You know, you're just thinking about a relationship. Probably thinking about relationships a lot. Probably the type of person that likes bringing your relationships at home. Like you probably on the first few dates ask, "So when am I gonna meet your mother?" <laughs> and I've actually I realized cancers always ask that. Like a cancer dude that I was um, been flirting with had a thing with um, like when I was in university he asked me like the first let's say we went on like three dates three dates three dates later he was asking so when am i gonna meet your parents and i was like what i was like wait what 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 do you mean and to you guys it's like a normal thing because you genuinely want to get that connected to someone you know you want to get that connected to the point where you even know each other's family members by name not just by surname by name you know, that's what you're thinking about, you know. Especially even with your friendships, you get very involved with your friends and then you meet their parents and, you know, you just get, it's, it becomes that deep, that type of thing. So it's like, you, you like, include yourself in people's families. That's what, you, that's what you would deem as love and connection and expressing love to people is like connecting to their roots. That's what cancers do. They connect to people's roots and that's how they show love. Um, Yeah, so... That's what you're constantly thinking about as a Cancer Mercury in the 7th house. We're going to move on to, what, the 8th house, right? So having your Cancer Mercury in the 8th house, these are the super, super introverted people. I don't doubt that you don't you don't have a lot of friends and you don't want a lot of friends because you have a whole bunch of deep-rooted secrets and privacy that you do not want to just share with anybody because you know how vulnerable it is for you to just be looked at as weak or something or... I don't know, you know, water signs always think they expressing emotions is weak, but at the same time, the world also sees it at that, so I get you. I get you. I want to apologize on behalf of the world for making water signs. You guys feel like you should hide how you feel, you know, because it's like weak or something, but it's not, because I get you. I get you. We here. We here. We here. Anyway, but having Mercury and Cancer in the eighth house, this makes you a very paranoid person. Very, very over overly protective because what you're thinking about is like it's it's you're like an all or nothing type of person with this you know especially if you have this conjuncting your sun sign you know very private very like what's fucking sagittarius rising yeah sag rising sag rising uh yeah you're sag rising so you appear to be like this goofy person but you're actually a very private person you're very private and you're very suspicious of people and you don't trust people a lot you don't trust nobody you don't trust no one except maybe your mom 
or the people who are the closest to you who won't leave you because you know they're with you forever so that is your mother really because your mom will only leave you until she dies like when she dies that's the only time she'll leave you so you'll trust her because you know that she'll never leave you know and that's another thing with this placement is that you're very protective overly protective overly protective to the point where it's like overly possessive and like overly um uh what's this clingy yeah very <laughs> that's the word clingy clingy as fuck oh my god it's like you hold on to a connection until the day you fucking die you know but i'd say with this yeah i think you're very maybe not thinking about sex a lot but i think for you like sex has to be with someone that you are overly sure about that this person is rocking with me till the day i die no matter what you know you don't want to like share those parts of yourself with someone who you know it's just for a short term because with you it's all about long term especially with that eighth house it's all about long term doesn't even matter you could have your moon in aquarius you know here i mean sure you'll be detached but you still you still only want to like rock with people that you know are your homies forever that's your man your women's that's your boo forever you know i love my chick yep yeah i love my chick i love you you know every day all day rocking with you all the time i feel like that's that's the placement for this that's the thing for that you know um also yeah i think you're just very you want to see having mercury in the eighth house just always makes you think about people's motives you know so you're constantly feeling other people's motives like you're over you cancer mercury you're also already reading between the lines of people you're reading between how they feeding and whatever but with this you're not only reading between how they feeding you're reading okay you're feeling this but why are you feeling that way like what's the intention like you're you know someone be like hi showing you expression you be like um the fuck do you want <laughs> the fuck do you want <laughs> fuck mm. no don't talk to me i'm sensitive and i don't trust people because you might hurt my feelings and if you're my feelings <laughs> you're gonna die you know that type of thing but i think you're very with this you're overly you're over like you are the empath the empathic people you're just overly feeling people's vibes constantly it's frustrating for you to just go out and just enjoy your own emo your own moods and emotions without picking up on someone's emotions just based on you touching the same doorknob as they did and now you're feeling everything that they're feeling and it's like fuck why didn't i just stay at home where it's safe you know you know what i'm saying that type of thing but yeah i think even with having cancer in your eighth house like you don't it's it's like you genuinely don't want to open yourself up or open your desires up if you haven't formed an emotional bond with someone or you don't know someone how you don't know how someone feels about you you know because you also may be someone who with this placement where you think you have to do crazy shit to just so that people can tell you like you may <gasps> oh my god i have to tell you okay so there was this girl in my high school who faked her death right we all thought she was dead she died from cancer but she didn't actually die from cancer right she didn't she was really alive she just claimed to be dead so she can get a reaction from her boyfriend who broke up with her at the time so she did the most drastic and she's a gemini i think she's a cancer mercury too but that that was a whole crazy situation i can't believe that happened but anyway so she faked her death because her ex-boyfriend broke up with her right so obviously like if someone dies you're like shit like i'm sure that nigga was feeling like damn bro fuck we broke up on bad terms mm -mm. and i'm pretty sure he's like she wanted to go on his ig post and like see him make a post about hey my ex-girlfriend died and i feel so shit what you know i feel like cancer mercury in the eighth house you probably do some shit like that i feel like you would <laughs> i feel like that shit would happen you know you just do some crazy shit just to fight just to figure out how loyal people are to you you know that's it because it's all about protecting your emotional well-being with this place but hey whatever so yeah um yeah you just know how to like bring people to like really confess their intentions with you and just also confess how they feel about you you know but you can always feel it but sometimes you can get paranoid and think you're feeling it but you're just paranoid and you're making things up but at the same time you also 
once you learn how to, you know, really listen to your intuition and your gut feeling rather than paranoia and not differentiate and not, like, confuse the two, you'll be okay. You'll be alright. You'll be, you'll be good. In fact, you'll be, like, a, some Reiki teacher or something, you know. I don't know, maybe a yoga instructor. Who fucking knows? I don't know. Like a, a psychologist, even. I would say these people would be great psychologists. And then moving on to Mercury in Cancer in the ninth house. So ninth house is all about, you know, like wisdom and higher knowledge and experiences. And all the experiences that you've had in your life have essentially made you wiser and smarter but more so wiser about the world around you you know nine thoughts is about other people's cultures and you know experiencing other people's ways of living that are different to where you grew up at you know nine thoughts is about like university just anything that has to do with extending your wisdom about pre-existing wisdom that you have you know so even with drugs too you may know what it's like to be high on weed but damn now you want to try something stronger than we you know what i'm saying that's higher education that's higher wisdom that type of thing so having cancer yeah i think cancer mercury in your ninth house i think these are the type of people that you so first mercury is a is asleep in the ninth house right mercury does not like the ninth house i have this place and i have mercury in my ninth house so i know that sometimes it can be difficult to properly like tell people or like i don't know formulate a words to really thoroughly explain what it is that you want to ask you know without so like with this placement you would have to use metaphors and riddles and you know just everything that has just like uh, yeah just metaphors and riddles or you're very straight to the, like you have to learn with this mercury in the ninth house you have to learn to be very straight to the point because if you're not then you're not going to make sense to people you know and then you, you you'll get reactions like like that because people don't understand what the fuck you're saying you know what i'm saying so um having mercury in cancer cancer is already like a water sign and it's not necessarily logical in its making you know and then can and then the ninth house also is a fire house which is sagittarius and sagittarius is fire so there's not much logic in there you know so you definitely somebody you have to, you probably a very introverted person on this you know you talk people are talking about some deep philosophical spiritual shit then then that's when you shine because then you get to show people how wise you are i'm pretty sure you probably dropped out of high school with this because like learning and doing math and all of that is like uh damn you probably did really good in like art or um, uh i don't know anything that had to deal with like I'd even say history. History with this, probably you probably would have liked history a lot more, you know, because you got to learn about the past and expand your knowledge about past situations. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but think dealing with like numbers, maybe you are so good with that. But yo, give you pen, paper, colors, paint, she, she, you do some magic, bro. You just, and that's how you communicate with the world is like through art in in that sense, you know. But for the most part. I feel like with this situation with this placement it's very difficult for you to like communicate this is what scorpio rising yeah scorpio rising yeah i see so you're already like a very quiet person you you seem intimidating you know what i'm saying you keep to yourself you don't really talk much to people and you essentially don't talk much because you know sometimes when you say like things you're either ov overly honest to the point where it's like kind of hurtful but you've learned that oh okay when i say things like this i hurt people's feelings you know because of that cancer connectivity so it's like okay better for me to not say anything and let me just communicate using my caring actions you know so you probably like um verb when you send verb you like verb you're a helper rather than like a talker you you communicate through helping people and nurturing and hugging them and Hey, listening to them you're probably a really good listener you know and that's why people come to you because you give solid and not solid but you give like advice that it feels like damn like you you damn you really you understand me like you got me like you got me you you really took the time to listen to me and you're not here like disrupting me when i talk or you know pointing things out as i'm saying something you're like really they just listening to me and like making me feel heard and comforted you know that type of thing um and then yeah i think that's the thing with that i just think how you analyze situations is always going to come from 
it's like always you're always gonna look at like okay wait this is happening for this reason but it's difficult for you to explain it in words like why like the reasons of why you think things are happening so usually just it's like you live internally everything happens internally you know you have this like whole world inside of you and nobody knows it because you don't even know how to communicate it so you probably turn to art and shit like that you know or drugs i don't know <laughs> i don't know i don't know you let me know um move on to mercury in cancer in the 10th house for all my libra risings yeah, all my Libra risings, right? So essentially, you're having Libra rising, you have all your zodiac signs in their opposite house. And we know Cancer is in its opposite house in the 10th house, because 10th house rules Capricorn, right? And Capricorn is all about, or the 10th house is all about your status. And it's all about, you know, how you present yourself to the world. Whereas 4th house is all about home, privacy. 10th house is about hey, world, look at me. Then look at me the way I want you to look at me, because I want you to look at me. The way I have crafted myself to be, you know. Ten thousand is about your career, your reputation, what people know you to be, what people think you are. You know, you just give out this, you exude this energy, depend like in public spaces, you know. Um, so having cancer here, first having cancer in your tenth house, people, you know, always know you for being a sweetheart, you know, you're sweet, oh, you're nice, you don't get on people's nerves, or you're always like helping maybe people pleasing you know whatever but having mercury in the 10th house you're definitely someone that's always thinking about also i want to say having mercury in the 10th house you probably and because you have capricorn in your fourth house so you may have grown up with a very cold aloof family or family where emotions weren't um weren't i guess respected or it was just a very detached family you know you guys cared about money and like how do we stabilize ourselves? Or maybe you grew up with a harsh parent, like a harsh dad. Dad was very cold, distant. Maybe showed you that he didn't give a fuck about you the way you would want to. So then you have daddy issues now. Um, or mom issues. Or whatever. There was just some kind of like emotional disconnection with this. If you have cancer in your 10th house and Capricorn in your 4th house, you know, as a Libra rising. Um, but having your Mercury in cancer in the 10th house, these people are constantly thinking about... Okay, first they are business orientated, right? But they, I think these, these are the type of people that, like, they prefer doing their business with family members or, yeah, I'd say family members. You're constantly thinking about how do I build, how do I make sure that the home is constantly okay? Like, how do I um, contribute in constantly making sure that the home that i live in is okay so you probably turn to people that you do trust which are your family members you know even though fa we're business or family never i mean you can but like mm, <laughs> i feel like it doesn't it won't work out really well you know just because you let things slide that shouldn't slide that you wouldn't let slide if they weren't your family members you know so having this this particular thing though you may be the type of person that wants to think about damn okay how do i bring my family members together and how can we all get money together you know and you're also gonna constantly watch maybe films you probably like films like what's like dynasty you remember dynasty with jade from victoria right she, she she's like basically worked for her well she used to work for her dad but it's like still family business type of thing you know um i feel like you'd probably you have experience something like that maybe not as drastic as like you know like dad like you are now you have to go against your family members and all the but you don't think it's still some you, you're still involved with building with your family you know it's always going to be trying to involve yourself with building with your family members and like you know what i'm saying like trying to sustain the income the money income in your family which is a really sweet thing but i think my perspective of it is that if never works out you know you can prove me wrong you can tell me down in the comments if i'm wrong or if i'm not wrong whatever um but yeah what you're constantly thinking about is how to improve yourself in business too you know you're always thinking about how do i how can i orchestrate my myself in a way that manifests or attracts specific, like specific um, business opportunities or opportunities that opportunities that can help elevate my stability you know what i'm saying that's what you're constantly thinking about so you, when you watch even movies or whatever you're always looking at you're always like taking notes down on okay she said uh, maybe need to get a movie um 
Okay, I'm not. I'm trying to think of like movie movies where like people give advice about how to get rich. Like Jay Z, he made a song about how to get rich. You probably definitely there taking notes. You're like, damn. Okay, he said that shit. Taking notes, you know, you're constantly thinking about how to nurture the stable income that's coming into your life. You know what I'm saying? You know, also very, uh, I would say you're introverted just for the fact that you don't want to waste your time on things that aren't contributing to your stable life already. You know, sure you can go out, but I feel like for you, if you go out, your intention is always going to be, I'm going out because I want to network with people. I want to meet people that are doing some of the things to what I'm doing and I want to meet people that are you know um like-minded or care about the same things that I care about in terms of how I stabilize my life in terms of like even my reputation and stuff I think you're someone that also cares about how people see you like you definitely with this you care about people's perceptions of you so you may even act in ways that may prevent you know people looking at you as the bad guy you know you know, that type of thing, you know, because you're a very sweet person. So I think maybe you even think about, like, how do I continue nurturing my image? How do I continue nurturing the fact that I'm a sweet person? What can I do to build on being a sweet person? You know what I'm saying? That type of thing. Um, so, yeah. And then moving on to Mercury in Cancer in the 11th house, right? So Mercury in Cancer in the 11th house 11th house is like mercury likes being in the 11th house it's like okay with the 11th house because it's a aquarius house it's like an air house you know what i'm saying so thinking and analyzing it's like so cool 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 but the issue is and this is for what virgo risings right so the issue is is the cancer thing right because now all having a virgo rising this is like an in conjunction sign so all the signs will be in their in conjunction house right so this could be a little frustrating because one thing about the 11th house, it's completely disconnected from family. It's completely disconnected from even the body, right? Because the in conjunction sign of the 11th house is the 6th and the 4th house, which is Cancer and Virgo. That's why Aquarius is, A, they don't connect well to their family members. And B, they don't really give a fuck about their health or schedules and shit like that. Unless they have, like, Capricorn or unless they have um, Virgo placements, you know. But other than that, they don't really care about having a good meal with their family members. They could, like, literally survive off of noodles or like rice and beans or whatever i heard an aquarius tell me that they don't give a fuck about like meals like that they'll be good off of rice and chickpeas it's fine you know just as long as they can get food in their stomachs and they're not hungry then it's fine they don't really care about you know tasting food or like really getting lost in your senses aquarius don't care about that you know what i'm saying so thus having the in conjunction there because they don't care about the fourth house, their family members, so they're disconnected from most of the family members, but they're also disconnected from like their bodies and shit like that. So having cancer in the in the eleventh house, it's like the, that in conjunction. So it's like now you don't you 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 don't you care about people that you don't know. You start caring about um, connecting with strangers and unfamiliar people, and you would rather like. <laughs> Yeah, you would rather, like, open up to someone that you don't completely know and that you don't trust. Like, you would open up to a stranger faster than you'd open up to, like, your cousins or your sisters or even have relationships with your cousin and your sisters, you know. You'd prefer telling a complete stranger everything about yourself and you don't trust your family members or you just have a very weird relationship with your family members or you're even disconnected from your family members. I think with this placement, you're definitely... Because having a, a Virgo rising, you have Sagittarius in your fourth house. So you've traveled a lot. You probably haven't had, you haven't formulated roots in your family or your family members. Like you have different family members from different places. So, and you only see them like once every two years. So you don't really have that connection, that connectivity with them. So it's like, you don't really, I don't know. You, you don't like know how to bond because you've never really, it's like you always, there's a, as soon as you're about to get close to somebody, you always, something always happens where you have to disconnect from them. You know what I'm saying? So having Sagittarius in your fourth house as a Virgo rising and then having cancer in your 11th house it's like you also disconnected from your family members you know in that sense so your family becomes strangers you know what I'm saying your family becomes people you don't know you start trusting people that you absolutely don't know and that can be a good thing or a bad thing you know what I'm saying some people are you meet that are really fucking cool and they're so dope and badass and then other people are just like assholes so that's for you to like grow up and realize you know um, but yeah, what you're constantly thinking about is like creating a family 
or creating closeness with strangers you know what i'm saying connecting connect you are like you want to be friends with your you want to be you want to feel family and close with your friends that's the vibe you feel a lot more emotionally close with your friends or as i said like acquaintances or you know people that have completely diff different ethnicity ethnic tradition ethnic ethnic ethnicity ethnic yeah you just come <laughs> oh my god you just like <laughs> oh my god yeah you just like connect or want to form connections with people who don't share the same ethnicity as you or the same traditions or cultural cultural backgrounds as you you know what i'm saying or you may be someone that you feel a lot closer to people who are like really cuckoo in a way you know you like feel you want to nurture people that like have these weird radical ideas or you even feel comfortable with like radical extremists like huey freeman you know you probably like huey freeman if you were mercury in the 11th house in cancer but yeah what you're constantly thinking about is like how to like as i said connect bond like form bonds with your associates so you're probably someone that even would value social media or what you're doing on social media a lot more you're thinking about how to connect you know a lot more with the people on social media than you will be with the family man you probably even moved out of your home early in life with this place and i know a friend had a friend who was a uh, virgo rising scorpio moon sag sun who so obviously her, her her fourth house would be sagittarius but she moved out of her parents house like when she was mad young like 18 maybe not young but like younger than most people you know but i also have another friend who's a virgo rising who still lives with his mom but he travels a lot with his mom they travel everywhere together you know what i'm saying they live together but they travel everywhere together and his family is like um he has different family group like he has family in australia and uk and usa he's just scattered you know what i'm saying and he likes bringing his friends over like he he, he invites and inqu acquaintances over to his home like i literally didn't know this dude and but like okay, i went there so he could teach me how to play bass guitar but at the same time it's like sometimes you know you could rent out a studio so that you could keep that protection away from your home like some people may not feel comfortable inviting strangers into their home but a cancer 11th house person they welcome that they completely welcome that they want that and they usually have all of these they probably would wouldn't mind living with their friends you know what i'm saying acquaintances or you know they let's say they came from a club damn this person needs a place to stay you'd be like oh that's cool come through that's that's aquarius i mean that's cancer 11 the house they'd be like oh okay i don't know you well trust you let's go <laughs> let's do it you know what i'm saying but yeah you probably also with this place and i think you have like a weird imagination how you think and process is like still to connect but it's like connecting to like these weird idealistic radical thoughts that you have you know and you probably have friends that agree with how you think that's like and then last but not least oh, i always love saying that last but not least <laughs> we have a mercury in cancer in the 12th house right so this also mercury does not like the 12th house it's it falls here it's away here this is the pisces house so this also ninth uh, house mercury also don't make sense but 12th house mercury don't make sense and this is like double what's all right so you don't even you're not even paying attention to what someone is saying bro you just you're really in the vibes of like everything you know it's like you you can go to a, you can go to a party just to feel you know like parties like parties parties always have that energy especially if there's like a mosh pit or something and people are just grooving yeah yeah just releasing their emotions you may like that i've met a pisces sun moon and mercury person who let me know like he likes going to clubs just because he likes you know when people are jumping you're just like one you're moving in unison so he said he likes that shit and i feel like that would also apply with this cancer mercury in the in the 12th house person yes you're introverted uh but that guy also sells acid so you know you probably you could also sell acid with this who knows even with this fucking mercury in the 10th house you could sell acid for sure you could be an acid dealer or drug dealer or something like that. You know, I'm just selling a vibe. You sell drugs because you're selling a mood. Because you know that the, that drug is going to put someone in a specific mood or whatever. But this could also apply with the 10th house too. You know, I mean with the 12th house too, you know. 
you're just there experience the vibrations of people like you just you can meet someone for example i'm let's say i'm a cancer mercury in the 12th house for my leo risings right let's say i'm a cancer mercury in the 12th house right and um i just met someone new like you i'm talking to you so i meet you and um like you're you you're busy introducing yourself hi my name is angela you know i'm uh i'm a sagittarius let's let's go do every blah, 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 let's go do this and i'm busy you know i'm just busy talking and me as a cancer mercury in the 12th house person i'm just feeling i'm literally just feeling out angela's vibe she could be saying anything to me, but I'm just feeling out what she move, like what she's saying. So she could be telling me something, and now I'm not even paying attention to what she's saying. But for the fact that she's feeling something, I'm like, mm, 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 mm. I'm just saying mm, to the feeling of it. It's like I'm, I, I'm saying, mm, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. i'm not really paying attention to what she's saying it's really just about how she's feeling like she's interacting with my feelings you know what i'm saying so that's what my cancer mercury and the child thought people that's how they interact that's how they communicate they're communicating by validating your feelings or i don't know just connecting with your feelings you know i gotta put on my lip gloss uh-huh yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> this that's what it's about though. Cancer Mercury's connect to the feeling of it in the twelfth house, and then also you. Pro I'm very sure with this, you like taking shrooms, acids, psychedelics, drugs, whatever, weed. Bobby loves smoking weed because it puts you in the mood, and that mood is like it's like you, it's like you're you're able to flow a lot better, you know. And sometimes you may get those Cancer Mercury's who are not like into drugs, but they are heavily into like spirituality, heavily into religion heavily into any kind of spiritual system that they use you know what i'm saying you know but if they probably have and and if they don't like doing drugs it's because they know like yo if i go in this she <laughs> i may not ever come back from the shit my nigga like it may not happen like that you know what i'm saying like they know like yo if i go into this and it makes me feel good over so they may just try to avoid that you know what i'm saying they may be scared of how good it's gonna be even with sex sometimes you know you may not want to have sex because you're afraid of how good it's gonna be and you may go crazy over that shit i don't know i'm not a cancer mercury in the 12th house <laughs> i'm just joking uh, but yeah this placement very spiritual people you just like you are very emotionally wise you know you can you definitely know when someone is like you may not know you may not care about what they're saying but it's the you know when someone is lying to you there's always a, vi a vibration of it there's a feeling of it you know you can you, you just connect to that you connect to that you and this is the perfect place for it to say that you really you really feel in moods and you feel in tones and you feel in vi you think and feel you think in vibration you think in moods you think in tones you think in um intuition you know what i'm saying that type of thing so no one can put a Zuzi on you. That's you. You you just know, as I say. Like when someone is manipulating you, there's a specific vibration, there's a specific feeling that comes with it, and you connect to that. So that's how you analyze shit. You know, with the feeling of it, how that it, how 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 it hits your nerves. You know what I'm saying? That type of thing. Because Mercury is all about your nerves. Um, yeah, I'm sure even now you're not paying attention to what I'm saying. You're just looking at me, like talking, trying to feel how I'm saying it. You know. <laughs> so anyway that concludes my video you guys um yeah i'm done i'm done this is the end of the video so in my next video we'll talk about mercury and leo the bad bitches yes you the bad bitches um thank you guys for joining me it's such an honor to talk about you guys and you know show you guys some love and show some light on you guys um yeah if you'd like to support me and like you know send cash my paypal will be down in below if you want to get a reading from me my information for ig will be down below you know make sure you follow me on ig or whatever like that and i'll see you in my next video where we talk about leo and mercury where my voice and my energy will be like a leo because right now i was giving out cancer vibes you know what i'm saying anyway that's me Tana markabar the one that you love so much and i'm signing out because i'm tired now Ah. <sighs>